In the island of Crete, as early as 3500 BC, many villages had grown into large settlements. The people worked in agriculture and had developed a social hierarchy following in the footsteps of other earlier civilizations. They would later become known to us as the Minoans. The name was given to them by the archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans, who was inspired by the myth of Minos, the son of Zeus who became king of Crete. The island of Crete had a lot to offer. Back then, it had dense forests which the Minoans used to supply wood for their houses and boats. They cultivated the rich soil of Crete and started producing various goods. By 2500 BC, the Minoans had developed a trade network with the Near East, Egypt and Cyprus. Due to the valuable products in the island's location, the Minoan network expanded rapidly, reaching every part of the Mediterranean. By 1900 BC, their wealth had largely increased and they began building the famous palaces. First the Palace of Knossos, then the palaces of Festos, Zacros and Malia. Stone paved roads were built to link the palace cities to each other. It is logical to assume that Crete was either a unified kingdom with Knossos as the capital or that the palace cities retained good cooperation. Around the same time, the Minoans had formed their first writing system, the Cretan hieroglyphs, which has not yet been deciphered. All around the Aegean Sea, there were several cities which resembled the Minoan ones, but it is not clear if they had been set up or had been influenced by the Minoans. The Minoan palaces and the cities that surrounded them have a lot to tell us about their civilization. The palace of Knossos was the most significant, with a large number of rooms used for housing, workshops or for storage purposes. It also included a courtyard and a theatre. The Minoans used bright colours to paint the palace exterior, interior and the famous frescoes. The frescoes are a great example of Minoan art. They depict animals, flowers, mythological creatures and give us an idea of how the Minoans might look like. In the frescoes, the red-skinned figures were male and the white-skinned female. The clothes also distinguished men from women, with men wearing simple loincloth and women wearing elaborate dresses. The extraordinary palaces were not the only achievement of the Minoans. They also developed the first indoor plumbing system with clay pipes. They had flush toilets, a drainage system, plus hot and cold water for their baths and floors. The cities which surrounded the palaces had two-story buildings that belonged to the higher class and small houses in which farmers, metal workers and other working people lived along with their families. Around 1800 BC, a new writing system was formed, which is known to us as Linear A. Comprised of symbols that indicated syllables, but just like its predecessor, it has not been deciphered yet. The Minoans used these writing systems to keep records of the various goods and products that were kept inside the palace either for redistribution to the people or for trading purposes. We do not fully know what constituted the faith and how exactly they worshipped their gods. What we do know is that the bull was a sacred symbol to the Minoans along with the double-headed axe which they depicted with exquisite details The Minoans also made clay figurines of goddesses which they kept in households and shrines, depicting deities with animals and symbols of fertility. As for warfare, there is no evidence that the Minoans had an army or a naval fleet. Despite the lack of evidence, we surely know that the culture was not centered around warfare, but they might have used an army or a navy to deal with piracy or internal feuds. We cannot make any conclusions though. We do know, however, that the Minoans were famous metal workers, and along jewelry, they produced daggers and other warfare items. Most were for status display, hunting and export. 
Around 1700 BC, a large earthquake damaged the palaces and cities of Crete. Still, the Minoans continued to prosper by trading, rebuilding the palaces and perfecting the art of metalwork. But this would not last for long. In the late 17th century BC, the volcano of the island of Thera erupted, followed by tremors and huge waves crashing down on the northern part of Crete. Volcanic ash spread through the atmosphere, burning the crops and causing climate change. This time, the Minoans could not restore the damage. Slowly, they began to decline, with few resources and lack of trading goods, Crete started to lose its importance as a trade center. As the Minoan civilization was declining, another culture started to rise on mainland Greece, that of the Mycenaeans, a people with a sophisticated social system and military power. There were several Mycenaean cities, probably self-ruling and united in a loose confederation. The cities were fortified and were mostly built on top of hills. The military culture indicated that there was unrest at the time, and it was also one of the advantages over the Minoans. Over time, the Aegean became more and more influenced by the Mycenaeans, who would later conquer the region and establish new cities. The same happened in Crete. Minoan and Mycenaean cultures were intermingled, but the Mycenaeans became dominant over time and the Minoan culture gradually faded out.